evoking memories of great competitors and confrontations. Teams from a dozen countries or more assembling in Dublin's O'Connell Street and they're off to Waterford. A very strong Irish team and they are numbered on this route from one to five inclusive between the two Moriarty's and Philip Cassidy. Two Dutchmen leading at New Ross. And it's another Dutchman who's leading where it matters most, into Waterford. Pale Key, the winner of the stage, but he doesn't go into the first yellow jersey because of bonus points along the route. In the intermediates, Ben Brooks from the Linda McCartney team takes the first yellow jersey. It's day two from Waterford to Charleville County Cork. Jonathan Clay very much in the picture. 35 years old Jonathan Clay. At Tramoy, a 15-man group leading the way. But all of that changed in the last 40 kilometers. And John Clay is through to the acclamation of the crowd. John Clay, the winner of the stage. And Clay goes into yellow. Brian Keneally, who had a great race. His second, Dermot Finnegan, one of the two Finnegans, in third place. One, two, three, Holland on the Monday. Harm Jensen, Pellekeel, and Eric Dagolet. And the first of the Irish home, David McCann from Belfast. We, we had to ride really hard to stay away from the peloton and we had ordered Eric up in front uh, not to work anymore so we could join him later and on the last uh, KOM he uh, broke away which was a very smart move just before we were uh, catching on and when we caught on we just passed the two riders and picked up Eric and that's how we went to the finish one, two, three. Simple as that. Tuesday, 18th of May, stage four and a big day for David McCann. He's home alone. 14 seconds to spare over Paul Helian. Yeah, definitely. Uh, my girlfriend was getting fed up with me going second all the time. So, uh, first big win in Ireland. It's great to have it. Quite an eventful stage. Yeah, it was hard all day long today. And uh, a lot of people, I think, uh, lost a lot of time. And a new yellow jersey wearer from Estonia, Eric Putzep, now based in Los Angeles. We're on to Wednesday, and the race moving from Dallin Road to Sligo, 107 miles. Great movement, and the tax all day long. The stage winner of yesterday, David McCann, had knee trouble and had to abandon after one mile. Puts up in the yellow on the road, and making the most of it. But can he be protected to retain it? Strong Irish team making significant moves as they come into Sligo. And again, it's a victory for Holland. Tom Jensen coming through, and he's got quite a bit to spare. Here he is, Tom Jensen. But there's a tremendous gap going on behind him. And keep a close eye on this the ferocity of the sprint, the domino effect. The first man down there was Colin Bracken. And happily, and most of all, luckily, nobody seriously injured. It looks a lot worse than it is and was. Dennis Easton, one of those down. Eden Crowley, Porik uh, Murray as well. And the Frenchman Fabian, Nicolas uh, Fabian. High speed crash right on the finish. Van Hoof, in fact, took the second place. There's Bracken, who was the one who hit the barrier just on the left hand side of the road. Somebody may have switched across him there. But uh, he'll survive, they always do. Right, Colin. Coming near the finish, like 10 or 15 miles out, the Irish team were bringing it all back together, and it was looking like it was going to be a bunch finish, which was uh, my strength like. So coming to the finish, then. Uh, a Dutchman had just broken away, so I don't think we we're going to go for the win. But coming down to the finishing straight, um, it wasn't too hard for me to get to the front. Um, but there was one Belgian just ahead of me, and I was coming up on him very fast. And uh, well, it seemed to me like he uh, just switched me at the last second, and I uh, went straight for the barriers. I, I just lost control of the bike, and I couldn't do anything about it. And, uh, but I, I came out of it not too bad.
Yeah, dismissive. The hard man these. That's confirmation with puts up in the yellow. And they move into the county of Donegal and they'd stay in it. Donegal to Killybegs, only 89 miles, but two very stiff climbs, the gaps of Barnmore and Glengetch. And tight roads, and it's gonna be difficult for anybody to make a shake here. Brenda Doherty, the Armagh Planet X team. Eugene Moriarty is going to be quickly on his wheel. Eugene of the Irish team, teammate of Philip Cassidy, who's the highest placed of that Clark construction Irish team. And there is Moriarty, number three. Good roads now, good surfaces, and the cyclists will like that. But there's, a, there's the ever-present danger, of course, of punctures and time delays. But there's going to be a lot of climbing on this stage from Donegal Town to Killybegs. Seeing brief glimpses of people like Seamus Howard here. That's John Blackwell, number 92. Marcus Smith of the Lincoln team there in the yellow and black and white jersey. Number 92, John Blackwell from the Kerry Irish Baltic team. But most of all here we see Philip Cassidy. You go back to 1983 and Philip Cassidy won the Ross. 16 years later, he's still a serious contender. And you think of this, he's only a part-timer, he's only an amateur. But he's devoted basically his whole life to the sport of cycling. And in fact his profession is Jobby, the cycling, cycle shop with Brian Connaughton. Tough day, hard day on the roads. Marcus Smith giving it a bit of a whirl here for the Lincoln team. Behind them, a couple of the Egyptians, for the first time an Egyptian team riding in the Ross. But remember, I was saying earlier on about the confrontations of the past, those great days when the Czechs and the Russians came to try and take over and were resisted, I can tell you, by the likes of O'Hanlon and co. Seamus O'Hanlon, Paddy Flanagan, Gene Mangan, what memories they evoke. Great winners, great stage winners and GC winners of the past in Lost Ocean. Still the battle is on and joined here on the way to Killy Bakes. Now, words are the consolation, admonishment, encouragement, or is it just a plain old-fashioned head throw? And the bunch keep working. Every man has a job to do. These guys are not out touring. They're not out to smell the roses, of course. Never are in the cycle race. Everybody has a job to do. Protect the team leader. Try and cover breakaways. Mark up. Bridge gaps. It's a tough, hard day on the road. Jack Watson, the man in charge of the race. Vastly experienced man. And loves his sport jackets. It may seem longer to these fellows than 89 miles, the journey from Donegal to Killy Beggs, but all the time Philip Cassidy is clawing his way back on GC time on Putzep. He's recovered as much as 50 seconds. He was a minute 18 behind, starting off today. And there's an elite group of 13 riders at the front of affairs. We saw there Paul Griffin, he was number 86. Brian Keneally, 164, he's doing an immense amount of work. 42 there, Colby Pierce from the combined USA-Europe team. And here are the men whose job it is to try and keep everybody in touch on the day. Putsep defending a yellow jersey. The Irish team trying to bring Cassidy back, clawing back, as I say, second by second. And a lot of climbing, back-breaking stuff. Number four there from the Irish team is another of the Moriarty's. The two Moriarty's in it, Paddy and Eugene. That was Eugene we saw there ever so briefly. Jeff Wright in the blue top is the one we saw prominent there. Jeff, a very good climber, and he would expect to really blossom on the roads in Donegal, Barnmore and Glengesh. 
Made for Jeff Wright, you would say. There he is, the blue. Jeff Wright is a former British national hill climb champion. And here is Jeff Wright, riding well. This is his territory and they all know it. Going for the Preems, the King of the Mountains Preems. And for that very valuable polka dot jersey, there's just no handling the man in this sort of terrain. We have uh, Janssen looking back there, Arm Janssen. Even Jeff Wright himself beginning to look uh, a little punish. He has time though to left, look over his left shoulder to admire this beautiful scenery. He won't be a yellow jersey contender. Puts up as the man in that garment, but Philip Cassidy giving him a great chase down from the Clark Construction Ireland team that has Richard Beatty as the manager. Harm Janssen and Jeff Wright are two of the prominent ones we saw earlier on today. Behind them, no damage being done to the main contenders because GC is what it's all about and there's a man, Philip Cassidy, who's right on the scent of the biggest prize of all. Jeff Wright about to be attacked here by Janssen. Janssen's had a brilliant week. He won the stage on Monday into Killaloo. He won the stage on Wednesday into Sligo. And this is Thursday. And this is Killy Beggs. And he's about to do it again. Three stage wins in the week. Jeff Wright comes in in second place at three seconds. And then there's quite a gap before the gallop. And here they come, high speed stuff. Derek Finnegan is the one, Derek Finnegan is the one who takes it from the Mead Avonmore team. Brilliant third place. Jeff Wright does indeed have the poker, but the yellow is still with Eric. Puts up of Estonia. Cassidy has now reduced the deficit to 18 seconds. That was Thursday's story. On Friday, the 21st of May, stage seven, the riders went to Coot Hill and County Cavan. And at the finish, it was another Estonian who got on the podium, Algis Maschknitz. But the yellow jersey has changed person, and the new leader is Philip Cassidy. So we decided to go for from the gun and to make it as hard as possible from the start to keep the pressure on people, you know. So they worked out very well, really. The, the pressure went down, and you know, when, once we got the gap, we had some very strong riders with me, and it was very difficult for anybody to bring us back, really. So it worked out, they got the jersey. He sure did. It's been a great week for Cassidy with two days to go. Stage number eight, the penultimate day. Brings the peloton from Coot Hill and County Cavan to Drogheda in County Louth. Quite a mountainous stage of 102 miles. Now the purpose of the Irish team today is to protect the yellow jersey, the leader. And the word was that Philip Cassidy had a pretty miserable night, suffering from diarrhoea. And uh, there was a doubt as to whether he'd be able to defend the yellow jersey at all, but He's a strong man, he's been around for a long time and he wasn't going to give up a chance like this to bridge 16 years. There's uh, Ray Clark there in white from the Irish team and it's up to that team, the team of the Moriarty's and Clark and David O'Loughlin to protect the man in yellow, Philip Cassidy. The damp roads add to the danger. Eric Dagelet from the Dutch team, he would know a thing or two about danger because on this stage he was going to puncture and that would be costly for him as regards any sort of honours on the day. But there's a lot of very good talent in this race, but the Irish team riding superbly and Philip Cassidy will be delighted with them. Not a day when he can do an awful lot himself, there's Jeff Wright. But Cassidy is an experienced man, he'll know what he's capable of. And this is the last chance, really, the last chance saloon the rest of them have to attack Cassidy. 
Look at this, the rain stops, all of a sudden the road is dry. It's almost like it's a, a, a hoop on the road between the two wet spots. Number 11, just passing through us there and making a bit of an effort, is another of this Estonian team they've impressed this week, the Siano Axin. And there's the yellow jersey of Cassidy, en route from Coot Hill to Drogheda. Very good rider is Philip. He was at the Olympic Games in 1984 in Los Angeles, rode in the 100 kilometer team time trial with Seamus Danny, Martin Early and Gary Thompson. Man in blue from Kildare. The Kildare team is uh, Kenny Connell, number 127. But back again, we see how the Irish team are keeping tightly together, encouraging, cajoling, and protecting the man in yellow, Philip Cassidy. As well as 84 in Los Angeles, Cassidy, of course, was also at the Olympic Games in Seoul in Korea in 88, with Cormac McCann and Stephen Spratt and John McQuaid in the team time trial over 100K. And uh, unless he lost the test for Olympic success, he was back again in Atlanta two years ago. Quite a rider, Philip Cassidy. The spirit is good. Crossing the border. And making a break for the border. It's Morgan Fox. He had a bit of bad luck on the opening day. See, he has no frame number showing. Getting his little piece of glory on the chalkboard, telling us that it's 22 seconds from rider number six, who happens to be Morgan Fox. The yellow jersey, a little puff of breath there from Philip Cassidy. But he stuck it well, and he knows he's going to survive today, diarrhea or no diarrhea. Malarczyk we've seen there from the Welsh team, Pelly Keel we've seen very briefly, and back again to Morgan Fox. Good day, he's a promising rider this fellow. And this is his chance for a piece of glory on Saturday the 22nd of May. Well Fox was to lead through the first two climbs of the day. But in our picture now, we've got uh, one of the Finnegans, it's Derek Finnegan, from the Meath Avonmore team. And the Finnegans have had a very good race this week on the Ross FPD Milk Ross. And Morgan Fox realizes that he's about to be joined. You don't get away for long in these races. You've got to have a little something in the tank to join up with the fragment as it comes through. So now we have five riders. The big issue is not the stage win today. It's the yellow jersey. Philip Cassidy in that. Not that yellow. That yellow. And around him, as always, his companions in the Irish team, like Raymond Clark, it's time for a chat, tactical or otherwise. Well, they're happy with that. Jack Walson keeping that overview of the race and in touch with the press behind getting that motor feed. Beautiful scenery around these parts, but when you have a job on a bike to do, there's not much chance to appreciate it. There are five away here. Pelly Keel is one of them. That uh, first big day into Waterford, you'll remember. Bill Moore is there as well. And two of the Estonian team, including the polka dot. A lot of fragmentation behind them. You'll see that the bunch is broken up into one, two, three lots. The polka dot jersey been worn by Algis Massignet of Estonia. But the whole thing is about to come together again because unless someone can introduce a bit of speed into this now and really attack, the attack is coming from Massignet. 
right on the climb as befits aware of the polka dot jersey which has become now the, in cycling the international symbol of king of the mountains and still the Irish team Richard Beatty's Irish team Clark Ireland team back behind there protecting the main man the man of the day, the man in the yellow jersey. Number 39 making the break here is Anthony Malarczyk from the Welsh team. A strong rider, a powerful rider, whom many expected to be capable of winning a stage on this one. And now we pick up the yellow jersey again of Cassidy. Golden Bridge, the last climb of the day. All of these counting for King of the Mountain points, there's the sprint points, stage wins, but really the Ross, like all stage races, is about the final yellow jersey, the top man on general classification. Jeff Wright has been a prominent rider over the last few days. As we change shot, we see just two riders, Malarczyk and Pelikiel, because Harm Jensen has gone again in pursuit of another stage win. He's at three already on the 1999 Ross. And the finish today is Andrada on the penultimate day, the final Saturday. And here he is, Harm Jensen. What a super week for the Dutchman. As a look around, he's got a few seconds to spare here. There's really no threat to him as he comes round the final corner and makes it a magnificent week. Four stage wins in the one week. Time to open up. Let's see what you're advertising and let the cameraman have their say. Harm Jansen is the stage winner. At four seconds, Malarczyk comes in. Kelly Keel just behind him at five seconds. And Paul Griffin is the man in fourth place. And the handshakes from them all suggest that on this penultimate day, Philip Cassidy truly is, for the ceremony tomorrow, the winner of the Ross. Well, the team uh, rode remarkably well today. Like, you know, when Philip uh, punctured out the 37 miles, those are the crucial stages of the race. It was at the first uh, climb of the day. And uh, we didn't panic. The team, two of his teammates were there to help him. Uh, one of his teammates gave him a squeal and he got back on fairly quick. It was a bit hairy at times because once you went over the climb, it's always awkward to get back on. But once you hit the flat ground, you rate the ride as strong and get back into the bunch. Like, you know? The team are fantastic, you know. I couldn't thank them enough because you can't win a race of this calibre anymore without a decent team around you. The days of winning on your own are finished because of 75 or 76 foreign, good quality foreign riders here. There's plenty of professional riders in the bunch and it's, it's they're the hard people to, to, to handle, you know. It would be very remiss of any sponsor to nominate a favourite winner, but can I just say, for all the oldies among us, the fact that Philip Cassidy looks like he's back in a winning position after 17 years is terrific stuff, and we're delighted with that. 40 kilometres, O'Connell Street, up to Parnell Square, and roundabout again, and Cassidy just has to sit in the middle of them there and make sure he stays on his bicycle. This year's event has certainly lived up to its best traditions. The race is renowned um, on the international calendar in terms of its competitiveness and it's quite unique and certainly talking to some of the foreign riders did point out that it's um, more in the nature of nine one-day classic races than a stage race. And the final stage in O'Connell Street in Dublin goes to Peter Van Hoof of Belgium. But the Ross, like all stage races, is about the man who gets the final yellow jersey, the final Maillot Jean. And that goes to 37-year-old Philip Cassidy. Philip Cassidy of the Irish team from the Clark Construction Irish team, a magnificent winner of the final yellow jersey with a whopping 2 minutes, 11 seconds to spare over the Meath Avonmore rider, Dermot Finnegan. Now, I'm relieved now it's all over, basically. It's, um, 
about midweek, but Wednesday I started to become more confident that I could win the race. Starting out, it was a little bit, I, did, I thought I had an outside chance, but once I hit Wednesday and realised how good my legs were, I felt, yeah, if things go right, I can do it. So ever since then, I've been very nervous and trying to make, do, make the right moves and stay upright that I wouldn't have any crashes or, you know, the puncture yesterday and it caused a bit of a, it, it caused a bit of hassle, but we got through it all, thankfully, and it just worked out in the end. Viva! Come on, let's go!